Hey guys, Sandy with The Rag Company, and in today's video, we're gonna be coating a brand new vehicle. Now this Toyota Tundra right here, brand new, off the lot, belongs to our photo, web designer, you name it, next day Nate, and uh, he really wants to see this thing all shined up and looking better. So what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, go through the truck. We've already sprayed it off outside. Uh, it is snowing today, it is dumping snow, and we're able to take it out to the outdoor wash bay uh, and basically get most of the stuff off uh, with some nice warm DI water. Now we brought it into the studio where we're gonna go with a normal wash. So we have a lot to do today. We have a big truck behind us. Let's jump into it. So jumping straight into our new Tundra detail. This is an exciting day because we love new vehicles. So we're gonna start off with step one, which is rinsing off any heavy dirt and grime. This had been sitting outside in the snow, so the first step was removing the factory film. Nate did a fantastic job in requesting not any of the film to be removed before the delivery. Now while this was pretty tacked on, it was pretty easy to remove. Jumping straight into the sticker removal was also relatively easy without any use of adhesive remover, just some straight razor blades. Step two was doing a decontamination of the paint using G-Technics W6 to remove any fallout from the transportation process. Now Levi went to town with the Green Star, but really there was no stopping him because he just loves using Green Star. But we did add Green Star to GSF, around 50 milliliters to 250 milliliters of gentle snow foam for the pretreatment. Now using the PF22 foam cannon, we're able to foam the entire truck. Now the combination of GSF and Green Star is one of our favorites and offering tons of lubrication with some self-cleaning power as well. Now we're spraying this right over the fallout remover that we just previously applied. Now we're gonna be agitating it with the two bucket wash method. Now my weapon of choice here was the six by eight cyclone wash pad, a 70-30 blend while Levi chose to use the Cyclone Wash Mitt, obviously without his hand in the mitt, and that's totally fine. Now what's nice is that we don't have to apply a lot of pressure because again, this is a new vehicle. And the final step in step five was rinsing the vehicle thoroughly, removing any of the GSF or any of the fall remover still left on the paint. Step six is gonna be drying the vehicle using some compressed air, also known as our MetroVac blowers. The MetroVac blowers are a great way to remove any of the water from the cracks and crevices of the vehicle, while we can come in with some of our favorite drying towels to really mop up the rest of the liquid. I chose to use the liquidator, while Levi chose to use the gauntlet. As always, he likes throwing down the gauntlet. At this point, we have a clean car that's ready for claying. Now, while this is a new vehicle, the contamination isn't horrible, but it still needs to be clayed before the polishing step. So for this, we're using the Koch Chemi Clay Spray and the Rag Company Ultra Clay Towel. We're using light pressure and going over the vehicle in every area to make sure that there's no contamination before we jump into the polishing and coating process. Now while Levi was finishing up the rest of the claying process, it was my opportunity to jump in and clarify some of that glass using PNS Clarity Cream. Now while yes, this is new glass, this new glass can still have water spots. So going through and making sure that new glass looks even newer was my job. From here, step nine is checking the quality of the paint, checking for any type of marring or swirling using our Flex Color Match Light. Now this is pretty simple. What we're looking for is swirls. We're looking for any marring, but again, this is a new vehicle and chances are it had only been washed maybe once, maybe twice, once it's in our hands. Once the paint was inspected, we were cleaning up any residual clay spray from the paint. So this is something that's not really necessary, but something that we personally like to do just to make sure we have a smooth area for polishing. 
So in step 11, we chose our pad of choice and we choose our compound of choice, which is the Rupa's yellow pad and the TLC last cut compound. Now you guys have seen us polish paint several times here before on the channel, but just to give you a rundown, we are doing the cross hatching method and focusing on any areas that do have any type of marring or any type of light scratches from the factory or from the transportation process. With the paint polish, the last step here was removing any of the compound residue with the Creature Edgeless 420. Step 13 is using G-Technic's panel wipe. Now we always recommend whatever the coating manufacturer's panel wipe or paint prep is for their coating is the one that you want to use. Now panel wipe also known as truth serum is also going to show us any swirls that we may have missed or may have been covered with the compounding process. So going through we're using panel wipe on the glass, we're using panel wipe on the paint, uh, but we are trying to avoid using it on any other type of plastics. And at this point we have a car that's ready for coating. So for this, we're using G-Technics CSL, also known as Crystal Serum Light. Now for this, we are using the G-Technic applicator. However, if you'd like to choose a five x seven applicator or another style of microfiber applicator, then you are more than welcome to. We just find that the small applicators work well, and we do like that there's a little area for our fingers to slide in. Once you have your pad loaded with coating, it's time to start applying it to the paint because let's face it, we're all looking forward to this step. So this is pretty simple. We like to do the cross hatching method, but we also make sure like we have complete coverage of the coating. Now CSL is okay to hit trim with. So while yes, you could use C4 on a new vehicle, CSL is not gonna do any harm to the headlights and or the trim. So we're gonna be going around coating the side mirrors as well as any other of the surrounding trim. Now in step 16, we're gonna let this cure for about one to two minutes for the coating to start to flash off. And then we're gonna be taking our 70-30 pearl weave edgeless towel to start the leveling process. The 80-20 is totally fine, but we're using the 70-30 in today's case and following up with the Eagle Edgeless 500 to make sure we didn't miss any high spots. This combination is definitely the one-two punch. Now shortly after that, we're gonna be repeating the exact same process with G-Technic XO after about one hour of letting the CSL cure. However, in some cases, you can also apply EXO immediately after CSL has been applied at the previous starting point in which you started CSL. So we're just going around the car at this point, making sure everything is coated in both layers of CSL and EXO. So, truck is done. We've CSL'd it, we've EXO'd it. We did do EXO all over the plastic trim. However, on the mud flaps, we did a little bit of solution finish over the top. Now, because it is snowing out there, we're gonna be 
covering the whole vehicle with C2V3. Now, in case you're wondering, we did CSL and then we went straight into EXO. No time to uh, let it sit, just CSL, then EXO. However, between EXO and C2V3, we've let the car sit for about an hour. We've cleaned the glass, we've done some other stuff uh, on the vehicle, took the floor mats, all that kind of stuff. So it's done, it's ready to go. And uh, gosh darn it, it was a whole heck of a lot of fun. We all had a great little Friday here, hanging out in the <laughs> snow. And uh, the best part is everybody is having a good time. So thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, as always, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. And for more videos, stay tuned right here at the Rag Company YouTube channel.